and welcome to Whippoorwill Holler. I'm Miss Lori and this is Mr. Brown. We live in the hills of Arkansas. We love the Lord. Keepers of the old way, but accept some of the new. We love to cook and we love to eat. We love to garden. It's in our blood. It's how we stay sustainable and fill our pantry. We do a lot of canning and preserving. We live a sustainable life. We love our family. We work hard. And every once in a while, we like to dance. So y'all join us. So today we're going to be making some bread and we're going to be grinding our own wheat. I want to show you the meal that I'm using. It's a nutri meal. Classic, I believe. I'm saying that right. And I'm going to come over here and I'm going to show you the different parts to it. There's not a whole lot to it. And it's very easy to use. And it does a wonderful job of grinding that flour. I'm real impressed with it. So we've already been using this morning. But I want to show you some of the different, uh, just the different components of this. Nutrimeal. And these right here, there's just two uh, two knobs, and that just this is your motor knob, and this is your feed rate, and this is what you're going to use to uh, to start your machine. And this right here, and when you get your machine, or if you have one, you know that it shows you the different settings for the how fine you want your flour or your cornmeal, whatever. And usually for making bread, you want it about uh, almost in the middle, not so much. Now, if you want a finer flour for, say, biscuits and stuff, keep it over here all the way to the, to the far end. But I'm going to be making bread, so I'm going to bring, the, bring it on up to almost in the middle. Then you got your your bowl down here, and this is where when you're after your berries go through the hopper and they're grind, they're gonna come here to this bowl. Whoops, and like I said, we've been using it, so there's a little bit of flour dust on it. This right here is a filter that filters it to keep it to uh, I'll show you the inside here in a minute. Of course, this right here is where your flour is gonna go inside your bowl. And uh, Mr. Brown to open that bowl up. Now, when you first get it, your bowl, the seal is going to be kind of tight. But the more you use it, it, the easier it is. Now, on the bottom here, there's a cup that you have on there at all times. It comes on and off real easy. And this is where your excess flour dust to come into. And uh, you'll just dump it in with the rest of your flour. Then there's your bowl. This holds up to 20 to 22 cups of milled flour. So that's quite a bit. But they say that when you first get it, and it is, it's kind of tight. That rubber seal is really tight. Put you just a little bit of cornstarch or something on that rubber seal. And it'll... Now, Mr. Brown's going to put the bowl in there. And the first time, the first time, couple times that you put that bowl in there, you're going to have to push it hard. You hear that? That popped pretty. Now, they say it gets easier <laughs> as time goes on. But, I don't know if they can see it or not. But there's two lines right here. One of them says no, the first one. second one says yes. And the edge of your bowl has to be right there where it says yes, or it's not in there. If it's, if it's right here, it's not in there good. And, and if it's not in there good, what happens? Um, Dust goes. Flour went everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Believe me, I cleaned up a lot. I mean, it just made me sick. I thought, what is going on here? So, anyways, Mr. Brown, he come in and he pushed that thing in there. And it, it might be a little more hard than some. 
Well, the lady, I called the lady on there because I was scared death was going to, you know, tear it up. I was afraid up. to push my muscle to it. I know. We was afraid <laughs> to push the heart on it. She said, no. She said, probably a while, you're going to have to really push on it till I guess it gets, it just gets easier. So if you ever had one of these or if you get one, don't be like me and think something's wrong with it. We just wasn't pushing in on it hard enough. So... Right here is where you're going to, your hopper, your, what do they call them? Anyway, this hopper. is where, yeah, this is where you're going to be putting your, your wheat berries. This right here is an extension. You don't have to have that on there. Really and truly, that's for if you're going to put 20 cups of wheat berries in there. But that does not have to be on there. And it just, it pops on there and it'll pop right back off. So that's not a necessity unless you're just putting... A lot of berries in there or whatever you're putting in there and if you'll read this it says do not mill seeds nuts sugars or spices they don't want you to mill anything in here that's oily it's got a lot of oil in it so anywho I'm real impressed with this Nutrimill and when I was doing my research this was one of the number one in reviews so that's what I went with. Now, y'all know that <laughs> this is our wheat grinder, corn grinder right here. And uh, it does a good job, don't it? I mean, it grinds stuff to pull you out of it, but it takes a long time to get a cup of uh, wheat flour. It's uh, it, it does good. You have to run it through a few more times. It, it won't probably grind as fast or as fine but if we had no electricity oh yeah and that's the reason we stayed with that was because of the electricity issue if we didn't have electricity then that there will it'll, it'll do whatever we gotta do i might you know i spend more time grinding but it won't it won't be that big a deal but if you can afford one of these and have one i mean this one seems to be i mean this does a really good job it does and they you know they have different ones they have smaller ones they have the real pretty wood ones that you can set on your counter it looks all pretty but that's not what i was looking for this is this is the one for me and if you all know in our introduction of all of our videos you'll see mr brown grinding um wheat berries i'm pretty sure it is it was wheat berries. yeah in this grinder and this is one that was given to us now you can buy these online and Will you hold this one up? A lot of people have asked about the name on this, and it's got several different names on it. I really don't know what it, this, uh, that, well, that's, that's it, where it come from. It's a Landers and, is that CIA? Company or something other. It is Landers and CIA dot S dot A dot. But on the other side, that's what it says. But they make all kinds of them. Yeah, they do. But this one was given to us, and yeah. it, it does a great job. It is heavy duty. And you'll find these in flea markets and antique stores. I don't know about this one, but uh, different ones. Um, if you're off-grid or if, you want, if you're preparing to be off-grid, you need one of these. So, some form of one of these that's, that's hand-cranked. And they do make one because Miss Vicki has one. At Vicky's Country Home, that's electric or it turns into a hand crank. Either one. It says it's a number two. That's hard to see, but it's a number mm -hmm. two. But today we're going to be milling some wheat berries in here, and we're going to talk just a little bit about wheat berries, and then we're going to make some homemade bread. So this is a Nutra Meal Classic. That's what this one's called. You may have done said that. Now there's another one that's it's a little top notch than this one. And it has a lot of different accessories too. So that's an option too. So the type of wheat we got, the wheat berries we got are Those are the, the hard white. White. And that's what I like making bread out of. 
the hard white. These here are, we've had storage for a year, right? Mm -hmm. We keep them in a, uh, a bucket. I don't know if you can see it right here or not. It's a food gradable bucket with a seal lid on it. And it does, like I say, this is a roughly a year old. Now then, your wheat berries should be dry. They should have a moisture content of 13% or less. 10 is better. Uh, a simple way to tell if they're dry enough is take you a wheat berry, put on something hard, and take you a, a hammer and hit that berry. If that berry just kind of crumbles up and kind of just, it won't, ain't going to turn from the powder, powder, but it's going to bust all up real good then the moisture content is probably okay. If it if it just kind of breaks under the hit, just breaks and kind of lays there, it's probably too high moisture. And especially if you hit it and it just kind of sticks, just kind of flattens out, there's way too much moisture in it. That's just a hillbilly way of <laughs> seeing if it's dry. Now they make moisture testers, we don't have one. And they say the worst thing that's gonna ruin your berries is? Moisture. Moisture and um, Weevils. Weevils. And most all grain is going to have probably, it, and it may not sound right, but it's going to have some type of, could have a weevil egg in your grain. It, you know, it's processed out of a field and it could have weevil in it. Now, usually if your grain does have weevil in it, you're going to see powder dust in your grain. You're going to see little bitty black specks, and you may even see uh weevils if it's bad enough i've got chicken feed before it and eat up with weevils and, and they're just thick in it but they claim that if you'll put that wheat the the wheat berry in a airtight container for two weeks that if it had a weevil or if it had eggs in it it's supposed to kill them so anyway, this has been in a bucket in the house. It's been in the house. It's been in the in the pantry. In the pantry, kind of tucked away, and not had no problem. It's fine. Now you got you got a red hard wheat. Red hard wheat mm -hmm. that is more suitable for making yeast breads. Yeast right? bread, and your white is actually more suitable for wheat bread. For wheat bread, yeah. And then your soft, your soft is better for your biscuits, biscuits and pastries and right. Your soft wheat. Now your soft wheat won't keep in storage as long as your hard wheat. And you want a uh, a wheat that's been the, all the chaff and all the the outer part hull. of the, the hull wheat part wheat. of it. You don't want to store wheat with the hull and all because it has. Uh, some moisture and has uh, oil in it and sometimes oil will make it go rancid so it uh, uh, you want it you want it just the berry just the wheat berry itself and when you grind it when you grind to make something you need to just pretty much grind what you're going to use within that day or two but mainly that day because when you grind it all up, it releases some of the oil on the inside and it could go rancid faster. I don't know how long exactly it would take, but you lose protein. If it sets it, out, it, once it, you grind it, it and it sets out, it oxidizes. Once it gets air and then you start losing some of your protein value. So your, or your, you know, your nutrients. So you need to use it. You need to grind it and use it. What you need to do. If you love eating bread and biscuits, grinding your own grain to get the nutrients is, is the best thing for you. We, we All of us know that. But when you buy flour, like I have in many, many years, and people before me, in the store that's been processed, you're not, you're just not getting what you need. So... Not getting all the nutrients. Not, right? no. So only... Only grind what you need. And for rule of thumb, and it may vary too, and it's going to vary on how fine you grind your flour. Two-thirds of a cup of wheat berries 
should come out to equal one cup of milled flour. Should. That's something you had to work with and eyeball. So I try to get as close as I can so I don't have, you know, you don't want so much left over that you're going to have to store it. So anyways, this right here should be make about nine cups of flour because my recipe is going to make three loaves and those three loaves call from seven to nine cups of flour and we all know it depends on your weather and how dry it is or how moist it is in your house i mean it's just depends how fine you grind it right so anyways we're going to try to get nine cups see if that comes out to nine cups two-thirds of wheat berries should make one cup of milled flour rule you know the berry but anyways since i'm going to be making bread i want this the top knob if you want it real fine like i did this morning and i think i'll make biscuits out of that then i'm going to be making bread so i'm going to come up here almost to right in the middle if i wanted to do some coarse ground cornmeal for cornbread i'd bring that knob plumb over to here so i'm going to leave it right there and see how that does and of course this right here the faster you do it the finer the slower your motor that's it's slowly feeding your your berry in there so it's going to be a coarser feed so i always just kind of keep it right there when i'm grinding just and so when you're you may be, if you do it and let them hear it at the end it's, the motor makes a different sound as it's grinding and as it gets to the end the rpm really goes up to a high pitch and you let it run for about five seconds after it gets up to about its highest peak and it helps clean everything out now of course it you know, I know that they have said that there's meals that are really loud, and they say this one is not as loud as a lot of them. So that was another thing. Now, as it does start getting to the end of your berries and it's starting to empty out, like he said, the pitch gets louder, and you can tell that the berries are about done. And after that, you'll let it run for about five seconds and let that clean them berries out, and then you'll turn it off. So what he's doing is he's just putting them berries in there, and uh, I think I'll bring them over here and let them look inside. I don't think that lid's necessary, but it's not. It's not necessary. Okay, he's got the berries in the in the top, what we would call the the hopper. <laughs> the hopper. The grain hopper. And uh, he's, it's not necessary. You don't have to put the lid on. There is a lid to it. He can show you. Um, just fits on top. It don't even screw on. It's just something that makes you feel better about it being on there. Um, I kind of like watching the berries feed through the hopper. Well, you might need to. Yeah, and you got to kind of swish it around sometimes. Feed them down. But it does feed pretty good because of the way it's. And we are locked in good, right? You locked it in pretty good there. If you want to, you can kind of turn it this way. And okay, since I'm going to be making bread right here is where I'm going to see if you have it way over here. It's going to be really, really fine. And for bread making, you want it you want it fine, but not you don't want it coarse. That's for sure. So I'm going to put it right there. And this is your motor. And turn it up here is going to be fast. If you go here, I think that slows it down to where you're going to, if you're wanting to do a coarser grind. So, if you want to turn it on and they see how loud it is, it's not too bad.
It's metal, it's steel. It's not there's nothing plastic in there. And it heats up like, whenever you grind like that. Yeah. Too. And you'll see there's a little bit, but not much, flour dust up there. You know, just kind of sometimes you bang the ball for you. Because yeah. there'll be some that's stuck on top of that lid. And then you'll have some, yeah. I had a brush around here, but I don't know where I put it. If you have a pastry brush, that's really good to use with this because you can just kind of knock it. So that catches your excess. Yeah, that catches the excess and it's good. You just pour it in with the rest of your flour. That's the stuff that catches it might would come out, you know, and blow all over the place, but wasn't very much. No. It was not very much. And then of course you want to clean all that. You can just kind of dust it off good, take your dry rag. We'll clean that off good. And then your filter. We'll clean it off. Time come. Yeah. You just take that off. And I think you can order more too, and you just kind of dust that off a little, just bang it. And it almost it. looks like that would be washable. So, right. yeah. <laughs> so it does a wonderful job. And you'll see through here that, you know, there's darker colors in and out of there. And all you got to do is take a whisk and just whisk that all up, you know, kind of blend that all up. But if you feel that, it is warm. But that's, that feels really good to be making bread with. I want to show you the difference too. Let's see. Feels really good. In fact, that's probably where I'll be putting it to make cornmeal because that feels good. But if you open this bag up, this is what we done earlier, and I've done it on very, very, very fine. And it feels like baby powder. <laughs> it's so fine. Yes, you can feel the difference. Feel the difference in that, Danny. I can feel the difference from looking at it. Yeah, it's fluffier. Now, you can make bread out of this, of course. But the texture that you want for like sandwich bread or something like that, you just want it just a little higher than you want on the very last setting for very, very fine. So, I'll, I'll use this up though because I don't want to set. In fact, I'm going to put this in the freezer and make biscuits or something in the morning with it. So, in the freezer or the refrigerator? Freezer. You can keep it in the freezer in the bag. I'll use it in the morning. Cold flour is good to make um, this. You can use cold flour like when you're making pie crust or something. Good thing. So, anyways, we wanted to show y'all about grinding your own because a lot of people these days and the way things are going are starting to buy the wheat berries to put up for long term storage. Like I said, this that I'm using right now has been in my storage for a year. And, of course, I've bought some since then. Um, so, how many years? Up to 30 years if you can keep. If you if you keep the weevils and you keep the weevils out of it and it's put up dry and kept in a, you know, semi-dark place and a sealed. And I, they have some different ways of sealing, but up to 30 years now in uh egypt 
the Egyptians, they have found in a very, very dry climate, very dry climate, but they have found in some of the uh, tombs. tombs or in, in things that they have found in the pyramids or whatever they have found, has, uh, they say that that wheat berry would still be eatable. That they found in there. Thousands of years. But they found berries, wheat berries in there. Wheat berries. And they were still eatable because it's so dry. That they were. So I don't know for sure what they were in. I've just I've just read a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. I don't know what the berries were actually in, but uh, now kind of interesting. You, if you're doing it with the old fashioned hand crank, this took about three and a half minutes. If that long did it, it took about three and a half minutes. I th it, three something like that. <laughs> Not very long. <laughs> but if you were needing nine cups of flour and you was hand cranking it, Mr. Brown. I could do it, but it, I couldn't do it in three minutes. <laughs> no, I don't think so. Might so take anyway. me 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> so, let's make some bread. Okay, guys, now we're going to be making some homemade bread. And we're going to be making about three loaves. Um, I'm going to be making it in my Nutramil, and this is a Nutramil Artiste. Now, I'm going to say this real quick. Uh, I'm not these I'm not this is not sponsoring this video. I'm not getting nothing out from any of the Nutrimill uh company. I bought these on my own and I'm really impressed with them. So when I do that I like to share with y'all. Now my big pretty red mixture over there, don't get me wrong, I love that thing. But there's a lot of things that, that mixture is not gonna do that this one does. This one's going to do a big bulk of a lot of different things. It's going to do a big bulk of bread dough, cookie dough. It's got different kinds of attachments for it. And we'll get into that as time goes on. But the thing that I love about this is the dough hook. This is the berries, y'all. This thing is going to get all of that dough mixed up so quickly and and do a lot better job than some of my other mixers because this thing the way that it is engineered and made it just it gets along the sides it gets in the bottom this thing right here make sure that there's no dough stuck here on the sides i mean and then on top of that after it's mixed up you're going to leave this on anywhere about six minutes and it's going to need that dough for you, and you won't have to do it. So, yes, ma'am. Now, the reason I went ahead and bought these two, uh, my, my grain mill in this, is because I'm going to be retiring here in a couple of years. And, you know, I don't know what the world's going to be like by then, but hopefully it's going to all be good. Uh, I may start doing a bunch of bread and and different things to sell at the farmer's market, different things like that, because I think I'll really enjoy that. So this was an investment for me long term, and uh, it's a good thing. So anyways, let's get making some bread. Okay, with the dough hook attached, we're going to get started on our bread finally. And I'm going to put three cups of warm water. I like my water between uh, 80 to 90 something. Always does a good job. I've got a third of a cup of oil, whatever oil you prefer to use. I need a third of a cup of honey. And like I said, this is going to make three loaves. Okay, we got our water, our oil, our honey. Now I'm going to put about half of our flour. And of course, y'all remember we. We milled this flour ourselves. We grounded it ourselves. And 
it, the recipe calls for seven to nine cups, and we know that that varies from day to day. I'm going to put half of it. So I'm just going to eyeball it. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a sponge. And I'm going to let it sit for about 30 minutes. And what that does is it just enhances the taste of your bread. Now, if you were using hard red wheat flour, berries, you'll have a little bit of a nuttier taste than your white. Okay, I'm going to stop at that. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to pulse it just a little bit. Now this has a lid you can put on there. Now, if you have a dough enhancer, you can put that in now too. When you're using fresh ground wheat berry flour, a lot of times using your dough enhancer and vital wheat gluten does help the texture and the rise of your bread. So that's a good thing to have on hand. So now we're gonna, now that we uh, added our flour and pulsed it just a little bit, we're gonna add one and a half tablespoons of yeast. And I'm just gonna pulse this just a little. Now, I'm just gonna let this sit for about 30 minutes. And this is the lid I was talking about. There we go. So I'm gonna just shut this up. You don't have to do this, you can just cover it. And I'm just gonna let this sit, 30 minutes. It's gonna really, um, it's just really gonna poof up and just give it a really good taste letting it sit that long. Now, one thing about this bread, it's only going to have one rise. Well, this is what it looks like after about 15 minutes. I'm going to let it go for another 10 or 15 minutes, and I think it's just going to be wonderful. Okay, it was real nice and bubbly, and I kind of pulsed it just a few times. I did. I let this sit for 30 minutes. You can set it, let it sit anywhere for 15, 30 minutes so it gets good and bubbly and just it's all poofed up and just looks so good. Make a good sponge out of it. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to add the rest of the flour. And I'm going to turn it on about three. I'm going to add the rest of my flour. I'm going to stop at seven cups and see what it looks like. I may have to add the other two. What I'm also going to add is a tablespoon of vital wheat gluten. That's something that's just going to help since you're using all your your all natural wheat berries grounded up. Vital wheat gluten is just going to help it just a little bit. Um, it's not necessary, but it does help the texture and the overall uh, product of your bread. And then I'm going to add a tablespoon of salt. Now, I always wait till I start putting the rest of my flour in because salt can kill your yeast. So, let's add the rest of our ingredients. This is my tablespoon of my vital wheat gluten. I'm going to put a whole teaspoon I 
I'm looking, trying to make sure the amount of my salt. Should be three teaspoons of salt. Now I'm just going to continue to put the rest of my flour in here. Now I'm going to hold off just a minute. And it's bringing that dough together. You can see it's coming together now. And I held off about, about a cup Looks like a cup. So I've got eight cups in here. And tomorrow I could make the same batch and it come out different. Okay, I like this consistency. So I'm not going to put the other cup in there. Now I'm going to leave it on three. And I'm going to let this knead for anywhere from six to eight minutes. Now you can make this bread in your own mixer. You can do it by hand. I just wanted to show y'all my new mixer and uh, making bread in it, so. Anywho, I think I'm going to love this mixer, especially when I get to where I'll have time to really make a lot of bread um, and different uh, big, uh, big recipes of cookies and pastries and stuff like that. I think I'm going to enjoy this mixer. But like I said, you can make this same recipe in your own mixer, or like I've done for years, just do it by hand. But you know what? This is going to be wonderful for me. And anybody out there that has any issues with their hands but loves to make bread, I'm getting to the point my my old hands and fingers, arthritis in them are getting worse. And that was one of the things that kind of drawed me to this, is that this is going to need it for me. And you can see how it does. And from all the reviews, it does an excellent job of making homemade bread. So we'll come back when our kneading process is done. My dough's been kneading for about six minutes. I could have let it go eight, but it was looking good. And if you do the stretch test and it doesn't break, then you know you're doing good. So it's not breaking anywhere. It's not getting holes in it. So it's good to go. I got me just a little bit of oil here on my on my board and this comes off real easy I say real easy at once there we go I'm going to put my pretty dough out here my pretty healthy dough it makes you feel so much better you know I love making bread but when you're making it out of your good old wheat berries and you know that it's going to be better for you than that processed flour just makes it that much better so what I'm going to do is I'm not going to knead it I'm just going to kind of bring it together because it's been kneaded enough and I'm going to cut this into three loaves like I said this is only going to have one rise And I'm sure I won't get these even. I never do. In fact, the middle one's probably going to be fatter. It always is. <laughs> I've got my bread pan sprayed. And I'm just going to bring these together. You do it however you want to. It makes me no difference. You do you and I'll do me. And we're just going to put them in our loaf pans just like that. And if you want to, you can sprinkle you some kind of uh, healthy seeds on top of that. 
Yeah, this one's going to be a bigger loaf. Oh, well. <laughs> this will be the one I give away. How about that? You know, if I wasn't, you know, going through the video and everything, this would, it would go a lot faster. I know when you're trying to explain things, you know, people watching, I think, oh, that's just, that's just too much. And it's really not, it's not, y'all. It's not too much. It's just that you're having to go through all the steps and everything, so. Anyways, we got our bread divided into threes. I'm going to put it over here. Like I said, I heated my oven just a little bit and then turned it off. And it feels about the right temperature in there. So I'm going to put my bread loaves in here. I'm going to cover them up with a tea towel. And I'm going to let them rise to they're about double or so, which will take anywhere from an hour, an hour and a half. I'm going to say this will probably take about an hour. And then we're going to come back and we're going to bake them. It's going to be good. Okay. Wow, this good old stuff is proofing over here and getting so beautiful. I sprayed three loaf pans, and these are 9 by 5 something like that. And um, my light bulb in my oven just doesn't heat my oven up good enough to proof bread. I've really struggled with that. I can do better when we've got um, the wood cook stove going and setting it over there at the side of the wood cook stove and, you know, in, in a chair or something. It proves a lot better. But today it's really chilly in the house. We don't have the wood cook stove going um, because during the day it's so hot in here you can't stand it. It's, it's that time of year. At night you need a little bit of heat, you know. But today it was rainy and everything, so really not a good baking day but I don't know when you're baking bread every day is a good day isn't it but what I done is I turned my oven on to about 170 let it heat up then I turned it off then I cracked the door just a little bit so when I get my loaves ready I'm just going to set them on the outside of the door here covered up and that should get them proofing now if the oven's still not too warm I'll stick them right in the oven. It really and truly, the oven should be okay to stick them in there. You don't want anything over 170 to heat Usually, I like about 150. Our proofers at uh, school, they get on up there to about 149 or so. So, when you're proofing something. So, it does a good job. And I want my bread to be, to do really good. So, like I said, it's chilly in here today. So, I'm going to let this proof just a little bit longer. And then we're going to finish our bread dough. Okay guys, this is about how I want it proof, so I'm going to go ahead, that's as tall as I want it, I'm going to go ahead and turn the oven on 350 and we're going to cook it from 30 to 40 minutes. 30 minutes and the loaves are out of the oven, cooling on the rack, and you talk about smelling good. Look at the crumb on that bread. Delicious. Turned out great. So, this homemade bread that my wife made i'm tasting it i'm extra full i just got done with supper but um the texture is really good it's uh it's not a dense bread and i'm eating the end piece of that i love the ends the heel part's my favorite but um it's it's just really good I, it, it would make great sandwich bread too I mean, it is I mean, the texture is just so. It's soft. And soft. It's, it's good. <laughs> I'm showing y'all my piece. <laughs> I cut me a skinny piece too. It is. It's a good texture bread. Y'all seen from the picture before the crumb on it. It's really good. Great. My good bread. I like it. I can kind of. You can, can you taste that honey? Just a little bit of hint of honey in there. Because mm. we didn't put no sugar. We put honey in it. You can't really taste it. I mean, there might be well, just... you know how I am about sweet bread anyway. No, no. <laughs> no sugar in your cornbread. No sugar in my cornbread. No, we... it's... You ain't going to go to no grocery store and find nothing that is as good for you and tastes like that. No. That's the real deal there. So whether if you use a, a hand... 
a grinder or electric one, it don't matter. No, Store you up some wheat berries. Um, my mouth's full. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I know right now it's hard to find it. Um, as your standard, I know they're way behind on their orders because so many people has been ordered from them, which is a good thing. But it's a bad thing if you're trying to get wheat berries and flour and stuff. But Amazon's out. But there's online places you can go to. Even if you can only buy a pound at a time. There are actually some. I think I've seen it was five pounds, but in a can. Yeah. I'm sure it's a little more expensive, but if you can afford it, it's Just get a what good you store. can and put it up because... If you have a grinder and all that. Yeah. Stuff. But maybe you've got a neighbor. If times have got hard, maybe you've got a neighbor that can grind it. That's true. And... Maybe you and a neighbor, a couple of neighbors, can go in together and and buy, if you can find the wheat berries right now, in bulk. Y'all all go together, put your money in, and go to a flea market or something. Find you an old grinder or a hand grinder. If you can do that, it's well worth it. With the way times are getting, we just don't know. And uh, you can always, the wheat berries, you can make cereal that would be good for you. You love that stuff ground up and uh, I do. cream of wheat and stuff, don't you? I do. <laughs> yeah, he does. I like it. <laughs> so, it's good stuff. Better for you than Fruit Loops. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's, that is true. So, anyways, I'm glad y'all stayed with us through this bread making process. Maybe you learned a little bit. Maybe maybe just wanted to sit and be with us, but... I think you're filming me too much. Well, if I turn the camera, I'll be looking right in their face. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh me! You tell everybody bye. It's cold here today. <laughs> <laughs> so we just been sitting around eating bread. <laughs> yeah, and went out in the garden and getting uh, some planters ready, rearranging and getting some planters ready. I did some of that today, but uh, goodbye. We're glad y'all stopped by. Raise beds. You got some raised beds ready for me. What'd I say? Planters. Oh, raised beds. There you go. I took dirt out of planters, didn't I? Yeah. Okay. But, yeah, we're getting, I got some more cabbage and broccoli to put out, so. We're yeah. trying to get ready. Trying to get ready. So, thanks guys for being with us and uh, prayers for the world over. And, uh, Y'all take care. We'll be back with you. <laughs> because you know what I say. We're always doing something. You just don't know what. And. God it's bless. It's just about that easy. It's just about that easy. God bless everybody.